In this clip, we see a B-17 test dropping a remote-controlled TV-guided bomb towards a target. These bombs were designed to take out hardened targets with pinpoint accuracy. During World War II, the U.S. attacked four Axis targets with these weapons. The intent of this video is to provide an information-rich presentation reviewing characteristics, usage, targets, case study missions, and the combat effectiveness of the GB-4 remote-controlled guided missile. Period documents refer to this weapon as a GB-4 glide bomb, remote control TV missile, or BATI. In 1943, the U.S. military defined the priority ranking of the various guided missile programs as shown on this list from an October 1943 Army Air Forces Board document titled Controlled Missiles. The priority list ranking includes glide bombs, azon bombs, radio-controlled glide bombs, TV-controlled glide bombs, and power-driven bombs. The channel has produced detailed videos covering both the GB-1 glide bomb and azons. This page outlines characteristics of the GB-4 air-to-surface missile from a 1947 explosive ordnance document. It is 12 feet 2 inches in length with a wingspan of 12 feet. The total weight equates to 2,536 pounds. The warhead is a standard AN-M66 2,000 pound class general purpose bomb. Characteristics and a cutaway of the GB-4's warhead is shown on this page from a 1944 U.S. Navy document titled Bombs and Fuses Pyrotechnics. The bomb contains 1,117 pounds of TNT. The bomb size. The damage the bomb can inflict on a row of brick buildings and is capable of blowing through 6 feet of concrete, depending on the fuse setting, as shown in this 1945 Terminal Ballistics Data Table. Like the GB-1s, GB-4s are released from a B-17 mothership. Two GB-4s can be mounted under the B-17 wing's external racks. The operator controller will guide the bomb by radio controls. He will view the bomb's trajectory by a TV image from a camera inside the missile. This operator is viewing the missile's TV image through a light shield and controlling the bomb by a joystick controller box. This page outlines bomber system components and specifications needed to operate the GB-4 guided missile from a 1946 remote control and television equipment document. The system includes a monitor indicator, radio receiver, light shield, and transmit receive antennas. The frequency is between 264 and 372 megacycles within a range of 30 miles. Screen resolution is 325 lines horizontal and 300 lines vertical. The TV signal is AM based. The bomb is constructed like the GB-1s by attaching a standard 2,000-pound general-purpose bomb to the GB-4's glide kit. The missile's movable surfaces are its rudder and elevator, but no ailerons. A cutaway of the GB-4 is shown. The rudder is here, and elevators are here. The wings do not have ailerons. The missile is to be deployed against well-defended hardened targets, which are visually contrasted from its surroundings. Average circular error equates to 200 feet. For reference, this October 1943 8th Air Force's bombing accuracy table lists conventional bombing circular error at 1,210 feet. The GB-4 bombing accuracy should be six times more accurate than conventional bombing. The bomb is released at a speed of 175 miles per hour at a distance 17 miles from the target, which is well outside the range of anti-aircraft flat guns. Altitude of release is 15,000 feet. The missile will glide towards the target at a 6 to 1 glide ratio at a speed of 250 to 300 miles per hour, and its time of flight is around 4 minutes. The missile produces no thrust. The missile's camera is mounted below the bomb pitched 3 degrees down and has a field of view 14 degrees wide and 18 degrees high. The camera is mounted here and its field of view is here. The GB-4 uses the Block 3 motion picture camera as defined in this 1946 AAF Scientific Advisory Group missiles document. The camera operates at 300 megacycles using the F4 lens at a 20 centimeter focal length. Brightness settings are for daytime usage only. The total weight of the bomb's camera equipment is around 100 pounds. The GB-4's control box, batteries, and antenna are located here. The missile's electrical system components are shown in this image, including the radio transmitter and antenna. A gyroscope keeps the missile stabilized in roll and azimuth. Radio-controlled TV-guided missile disadvantages and advantages are listed on this page. The transmit and receive systems are complicated, susceptible to jamming and interference, and requires a clear target view. Advantages are the bomb is more accurate than conventional bombing. The operator can change to a new target while the missile is in flight. It will be less susceptible to decoy targets. The operator, though, must be well-trained in using the system. 
Since a GB4 missile is released far from the target, the operator will be challenged in maintaining target contact during the 4 minute time of glide. He will need to fly the bomb to the target. Pre-mission briefing will need to cover the monitor views expected with terrain and relief models. Improper briefing may lead to mission failure. Another advantage of the glide bomb is listed in this 1942 memo. The flat trajectory increases the likelihood of a building strike. The bomb can ground skip travel up to one mile and one third mile over water. This clip shows the bomb's shallow glide slope and skipping after ground contact. A total of six GB-4 bombs were dropped in combat during World War II as shown on this table from a 1945 Air Force's operation document. RBC is remote control bomb or batty bomb. The original GB-4 targets included V-1, V-2 rocket sites along the French coastline, as discussed in this October 1944 3rd Bombardment Division document titled Final Report on Batty Project. Due to the rapid advancement of Allied troops after D-Day, these targets were captured. The mission dates, target types, and locations, and number of G-4 bombs are shown on this table. Mission 1, attacking the E-boat pens in France with two bombs. Mission 2, attacking the U-boat pens in France with two bombs. Mission 3, attacking a steel works factory in Germany with one bomb. Mission 4, attacking an oil refinery in Germany with one bomb. Fighter escort to be provided. This map from a 1945 United States Army Atlas of World Battlefronts document outlines the state of Reich-occupied territories as of September 1, 1944. The mission locations are identified on the map. The group commander's first mission report on the e-boat pen attack is described on this page. A mosquito photo plane was added to the formation to take footage following the first bomb down. They lost sight of the first bomb. The mosquito followed the second bomb on its glide to the target. The mosquito was struck by the GB-4's bomb fragments. One shoot was seen. Bombing was not successful due to TV receiver failure. The mothership receiver could not pick up the camera images. One bomb struck one mile short of the target, and the other struck one mile to the right of the target. No enemy opposition was encountered. The group commander's second mission report on the U-boat pen attack is described on this page. One B-17 took off with two GB-4s under its wing. The plane was escorted by 12 Mustangs. The first bomb's TV unit failed and they could not receive any images. The bomb was lost. The second bomb spun out of control and struck to the side of the target. This was due to a system malfunction in the control ship. Both bombs were released from an altitude of 17,000 feet at a speed of 165 miles per hour. No enemy aircraft were encountered. Visibility conditions were described as ceiling and visibility unlimited. No issues in seeing the mean point of impact. Crews suggest to increase visibility, paint the top of the bomb yellow. The group commander's third mission report on the Steelworks attack is described on this page. One B-17 carrying a single GB-4 bomb took off. Nine Mustangs gave fighter support. The target was obscured by six to eight tense clouds. The operator released the bomb through the clouds, figuring he could pick up the images as the bomb broke through the clouds. The picture came in when the bomb was at an altitude of 3,000 feet. At this altitude, the bomb will strike the ground in around 48 seconds, not enough time to align with the target. No Steelworks was in sight. The bomb struck three miles from the target. Another report indicates he was aiming at the only contrasting object in view. This was a church. It was too late to change the missile's course away from the church. The church was six miles from the primary target. The 12 screen images show the TV snapshot returns. The church is in the pictures highlighted. As you can see, target contrast is important. The group commander's fourth and final mission report on an oil refinery attack is described on this page. One B-17 carrying one GB-4 was dispatched. Poor visibility conditions existed at the target. Two runs were made and the bomb was released. The bomb missed the target. This overall mission summary chart indicates the bomb missed the refinery by six miles. A gross bomb error occurs if the bomb falls outside of a 3,000 foot circular distance, and mission failure occurs if less than 5% of the bombs land within 1,000 feet of the target, as defined on this page from a 1947 document on bombing accuracy. The four GB-4 missions were all failures.
Post mission reviews and program recommendations are listed on this page. The missions were flown as planned. Difficulty was encountered in maintaining target TV screen contact. The target contrast to background needs to be more pronounced. No film recording of the bombing was collected. No fighter opposition was encountered, only slight AA fire. Many missions were scrubbed due to poor visibility and or lack of fighter availability. Program recommendations include, must have ceiling and visibility in limited conditions. The targets must be clearly distinguishable from surrounding structures. CAVU conditions are rare in Europe and mostly occur in summer. Targets should be selected based on their background contrast. The weapon is sound but did not perform well in tested combat. The missile can be controlled only if the target can clearly remain on the screen during its full glide. The operator should study the area and be aware of features he will encounter on screen. Bomb flares would help in guiding the bomb during its initial phase, then transfer to the TV screen for the final phase. This image shows the flares incorporated in the GB-8 to aid in its visibility. With regard to the last recommendation, this page from an October 1945 Air Material Command document recommends adding a radar beacon to the GB-4 bomb. This way, the bomb can be tracked and guided using the bomber's radar until close to the target. Then it can be guided to the target by the TV system. A B-29 or B-32 can carry four GB-4 bombs under its wings plus some of their internal bomb load. This program morphed into the GB-15, a continuation story for another day. If you've enjoyed this GB-4 radio-controlled TV-guided missile deep dive review, interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.